All right, people, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way, you'll know when I upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Every time I upload a new video, I'll be tweeting. Ladies and gents, almost as you react, and this is Bloodborne Review Defeat Guards Doll Waifu Simulator. Okay, this is by the channel Maxer. Oh, the sweet Bloodborne, it sings to me. Bloodborne is from 2015. I heard of a lot of this game, right? It's a PlayStation 4 game. Uh, but yeah, I think it's uh, what supposed to be like Dark Souls or I guess you know uh, Take inspiration from Dark Souls or something like that or maybe the combat is similar. I remember something like that Never played it uh, Maybe I should have because I have a PS4 and Bloodborne is PS4 exclusive and people say it's really good So we'll see how much Maxer likes it <laughs> I love this channel so far. I directed two videos from this uh, you know, Both of them was fucking incredible. This is like Another sets in tech uh, type of guy with his own type of humor. So yeah, I guess he's started doing this kind of review type of thing pretty recently, right? Because his older videos are not like that. I'm pretty sure. But yeah, let's always one. Remember, if you like my Dixon, don't forget to like and subscribe. By subscribing, you'll be supporting my channel to close to 10,000. And that way I'll know which type of channels to react to more. Check out other weeks and I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast for playlists. Check out the cards in yeah, Let's watch it. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign language, and stricken with Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls <laughs> Spider people and the great <laughs> journeying further, John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60 year old man he keeps as a pet, and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth ridden alleyways of a post Brexit Britain, slaying monsters, exploring, <laughs> and tricking women into being impregnated. You know what? There's way too much similarities between Seth and him, <laughs> even with the jokes by God so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization of a Metroidvania with something new around every corner. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges and has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch truth. So if you can, play it yourself because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest using me as genuine advice. It's not on guides. However, most people can't play this game ever because you have to buy a $400 magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no anti aliasing. Port this game to PC, I beg of you. In fact, I can assume that a lot of people watching this. Wait a minute, is that a, some kind of a thing? Or he's just wishing on it? Something that, you know, Sony's going to import, but, you know, bring on PlayStation games on PC. Because that would be fucking great. I'll uh, games like Uncharted and things that I want to play on PC. I don't like shooters on consoles, right? So I never played Uncharted, uh, you know, on PlayStation 4 when I had it. Maybe I should have, but I don't know. Now I don't know if I should play it on PS4 since his graphics would feel really outdated, but I don't know, we'll see. This video will basically never play the game, but keep watching because I'm hilarious and original. Do that, and I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. <laughs> The gameplay is what makes this game great, and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated. On a simple level, your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks, dodging and hitting. And dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Every encounter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On a complicated level, you have a gun, and normally bullets hurt people, but in London, bullets are 
suggestion, like the Geneva Convention. Here in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the foot. Side note, the most optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig... <laughs> He just walked past that like it's nothing. <laughs> Man, this is... First of all, if you dodge and you... What, you're invincible during that time? So it's not like, you know... Yeah, Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, you, your ass would get whipped if you, you know, got caught or something. But yeah, overall... Uh, you know, it makes sense. Like, gun stuns people. And then you just, I guess, rip their organs or whatever. They do. This is an action RPG. So it's not just simple, you know... A killing stage by stage and moving forward. Fisting route. See, I changed the web page. And in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Then entice these two swindler bastards to be mauled to death by members of Organization 13. Repeat 50 times. On a complicated -er level, every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets. And transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 attacks. On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry. My favorites are more money, more more money and more money they stack. Finally, on a meta theoretical chiropractic level, every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon, like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence. There's definitely more and a lot of strategy in how you level up your character, but I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, to learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the Lore. So buckle your britches, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns out the <laughs> Dude, come on all right is this you know is he just i guess adding things or it it is based on cthulhu and you know a low craftian thing right is it that uh, you know lore uh, this is low craftian type of game right cthulhu yeah <laughs> although he just he was just giving that einstein thing and constantly talking about how the combat system works and everything it was just incredible the blood can heal people. Which yeah, just four minutes in. How much content does he cramp in in the four minute thing? We're just four minutes in really good due to all the knife crime. So everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals. But it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf. So the church hires a guy named German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters. But there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife They've crime is increased even names. more and German sort of goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall Amazonian. He also canonically has sex with it. The moon god, for some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, all right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth dimension. So in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation, so comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-shills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Yes, you have been jinked. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way. Except for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, who were placed into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it. But it's hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick all right i i have played dark souls long time ago right when i was actually way too much into games and i was actually way too good playing multiplayer games counter strikes and shit like that I was really good at the time i played dark Souls loaded i don't know if i can do that anymore but yeah 
Uh, I can appreciate a greatly made difficult game, but difficult with a reason, not just unrealistically difficult, right? Dark Souls was extremely difficult, but not in an unrealistic way. If you're good, the game feels rewarding. So if this is like that, it would be fun, right? Uh, Witcher 3 had, I mean, I, I don't want to say Witcher 3's combat system was like Dark Souls, it was not, right? But it has similar feel to it, right? If you, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, right? Even the simple Wraith can kill you. Right, simple wraith that you know, just like you know, nothing. It's the start of the game type of thing. But if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, even simple wraith can kill you. You need to know which type of science to use and what. So I like that. It's not just simple level based things where you just jam your button and just dodge, dodge, dodge. Into a building sized deer demon. So yeah, I would be impressed if he killed that. But not only that, unlike Dark Souls, every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky. Bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow sicked. And human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. Unless you're fighting Rom, who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches. We don't talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses... So let me get this straight. With that monster, arachnid. So people who are afraid of spiders would get a cringe. And also, those eyes, so many holes. What is that phobia? The holes phobia. That people see multiple holes together and they just have the issue. Even they would like, what the fuck? So it's two in one apparently, two phobias in one. Motherfucker, let me tell you something. The humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But Mikalash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God forbid you're hit by him because that's 10 minutes gone. Here's a tip, save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole, poison him repeatedly, and watch him spaz the fuck out until death. You will thank me. But as a result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering- I'm not gonna lie, if, I, if I'm playing this game and every boss is a challenge, then I come across a boss that just basically runs away, and I guess at the in the meantime just jabs you and runs away again, in the end killing you, that would piss me off at the level that I would not stop playing game until I kill that asshole, right? I don't care if it takes hours. That would frustrate me. A boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play, and their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. But that isn't most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the area, so let's I get like into the that. Music. Lesson one in area design where the fuck am I going? Exploration is the name of the game, except it's called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The plague of beasts infecting London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive at night, and slurs your speech. <laughs> so it's up to you to stop them, as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used to it. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh, look, there's loot in this hallway. My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration, where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. Ago, and I hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map. Every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery like and your that. hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start I like that. This is old style gaming, right? Where people, where games didn't used to hold your hands. Where you actually get frustrated because you just realize you just went through a maze and came back at the start of the fucking map or stage or whatever. The game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game, everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture Hall, and no, it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the Lecture Hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. The game also has two completely <laughs> secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for 
its combat because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that From Software hates us all since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But it's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle so that she may feel the wrath of the proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip who guards the way as an eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help and assist others. Then, take a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man Group. And if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest- uh, I have same issue with Seth that I have issue with this channel apparently now. That I don't know which one is the joke, which one is the actual plot of the game. <laughs> Man, this is awesome line is the one where you descend into literal hell complete with eternal punishment insanity and femboy fishing the scariest of them all i'm of course talking about the dlc the only dlc for this game and if you play through bloodborne you have to play through the dlc i'm not giving you a fucking choice so to learn why you should play the best expansion ever made since spore galactic adventures Jump jungles come with me on this amazing journey to find the secrets of the bloodborne the old hunters I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by H.P. Lovecraft. It would be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the process of this- <laughs> They killed it, killed the god so bad that <laughs> the consciousness of it died in the other dimension. <laughs> it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death, where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity, indistinguishable from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's bad, but because he's too good for you. The first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is not actually a real corral. But like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second Second phase is even harder. Now I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the So yeah, that is also an issue, right? That was the issue with uh you know uh Dark Souls, yeah, Dark Souls. Yeah, yeah, so sometimes some enemies are way too difficult for most uh, most of the people who play the game. So that causes basically people to I guess refund the game, like I can't get through this shit or whatever. Uh, that there is always an issue with developers like should we make this game this hard because what if people basically just said I can't play this and just you know re refunds it <laughs> so that is always an issue but I like that right if you really get through it doesn't matter how frustrating it is that is like you know natural serotonin booster right there you don't need opiates hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game ever. So your ass will be clenched the entire time and the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh. But like this boss, you are the one who is truly overcoming these challenges. And I believe in your ability to beat both of them. King Boss Lightning Round. The DLC has many such cases of amazing bosses, including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight foot tall doll fetish, but we'll get back to that. And Orphan of Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this is the fight for you. Oh and as with god. everything that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my advice. Don't fight Lawrence, you only lose. <laughs> one of them is Ludwig. All right, a Viking name. And then uh, here you go. Here's another one. His name is Lawrence. 
ripped apart of yourself. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. To wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. Holy shit, I am alive right now. Have you ever thought, as I do, that this game is just too good? That you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game? Such as the engagement of the Chalice Dungeons. I, of course, jest. They're fine, probably, except for half of them, because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about how, and more importantly, why. First of all, Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random. For my footage, I played the shared dungeons so that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is mandatory. One of the biggest strengths of Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. All right, randomize uh, thing works for, you know, the people, you know, there used to be games decades ago where you just climb levels and levels and it's like, holy shit, you're level 30? You're level 35? I've never seen anybody go to that level and just feels challenging. I guess random, uh, you know, maps does that. Obviously, bosses are dangerous. So with every random level, you don't know what to expect, right? So there's always this increased challenge for you, right? You don't need another game, right? The game's over, who gives a fuck? Let's just play a randomized thing. It will keep you on your toes. You don't need another game. Why Why pay for another game when Bloodborne is right there? Unless Bloodborne 2 comes, I'm just gonna play this shit. It kinda works. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice Dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath, so you instead fight SCP-96. But why are we here? It turns <laughs> out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The Chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls at you, stark naked, wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also extends to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like Tumerian Descendant, Watchdog, and the three overweight men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I beat Sekiro backwards on a keyboard and this shit is too fucking much. Now normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture for they are the save edit dungeons, whereby through wizardry the community are able to conjure up deep dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets there are only two that I shall reveal to you, and the first is the Cum Dungeon. Yes, you heard that correctly and clearly. The Cum Dungeon is the name of the most optimal farming route ever conceived afterwards. by the fucking cricket people who do this shit. Whereby, the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high-level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's pig fisting route can give you 10,000 oh, oh, echoes. Oh. This gives 83,000. And if you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon anything. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers forgot to delete, like this doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the Chalice Dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now before we sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC, and it better then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively and finally this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't let's be honest games like Dark Souls and even Bloodborne would be perfect for PC <clears throat> people are forgetting that PC is where the hardcore players lies right and games like this I mean you have to be properly hardcore 
talk about The Hunter's Dream. After all the combat, the battles, and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell down and felt defeated, and German says you're allowed to have sex with What the fuck? With her. When this, uh, you know, okay, maybe Max Horizon making jokes. All the things he said is part of the fucking story. I fell down and felt defeated. She was there to pick me up. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended to be impressed. And she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game is perfect and complete because she is in it. Now excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should you get the game? Yes, absolutely. I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued <laughs> Seriously man, I would like Bloodborne to come to PC too, then I'll play it. I have PlayStation 4, but nah, I don't think so. And even like he said, tantalizing, there's many issue with the game. Uh, PlayStation 4, I, you know, uh, like I said in one of the videos, I had misconceptions that con consoles, games are, I guess, you know, f polished for consoles. No way would lag on that, but that's bullshit, right? They would literally water down the game. I'm pretty sure Assassin's Creed Syndicate is 900p on PlayStation 4, and I guess 720p on Xbox One or something when it came out. And I'm like, like fuck that, man, this is just too much. Right, Unity lagged, that was the case with the fucking, uh, you know, Syndicate, and, you know, uh, now NTLizing issue with Bloodborne. So yeah, PC all the way, I hope it comes to PC. I mean, GTA 5 came to PC and it was, was an incredibly good looking game, right? Same thing with Red Dead Redemption 2, it looks incredible, so yeah. Probably well, that was Bloodborne Review, Defeat Gods, Doll Waifu Simulator by the channel Maxer. I love this channel so far. It's just like Seth, right? I hope, you know, uh, just, you know, there are more channels like this, right? Because uh, so far I've found Seth and Maxer. That they just do game reviews and they're incredible. Alright people, if you like my reaction, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, so I know which type of videos to react to more. And by subscribing, you'll be supporting my channel. Check out the reaction under this link in the description. Check out the car for playlists like Seth, uh, John Tron, Inter Historian, History, Warhammer 40k. And yeah, I'll see you next time.